Hey everyone, I'm Joe and today it's time for me to do my November 2016 reading wrap up part 1. This is everything I read in the first half of November from the 1st of November until the 15th. As you can tell from the thumbnail I had a rather good reading month. This is mainly due to the rereadathon that Aoife from uh, the channel Fred Weasley Died Laughing uh, was running in the first week of the month which I took part in and I'm really glad I did because I reread a really good series that I've loved ever since the original book was released although I'll get to that in a few minutes. Hopefully this video should be relatively short despite the fact that there's like 12 books in it or something because eight of them are a series so I'm not really going to talk about them and, I, and indeed I'm going to do a full series on that particular series. Anyway, let's get on to the first book. So we have first of all Downstation by Simon Morden. This was sent to me by the publisher Gollants, courtesy of Stevie as well, so I'll link her channel in the description below as well. This is the first in an ongoing series. There are um, so far two of them. I, I also have the second one, although I haven't read it yet. I will read it in the next few weeks because obviously I was setting up as well, so I need to read it, frankly, because that's the point of being sent books, really, that I read them close to when they're released. This is a fantasy book that is quite curious because it doesn't start off fantasy. Actually, it starts off in the London Underground with a selection of characters and they're just going about their normal everyday business, going through the London Underground, you know, to work and whatever. And indeed, two of them actually work as part of maintenance crews in the Underground. And something weird happened. There's some sort of great fire or something above ground in London and there's unbelievable heat, I mean truly astonishing heat and these people managed to, what a selection of them, managed to actually sort of escape through the underground and bump into each other and then they end up going through a door and the door disappears which, and from, the, from their side in this world now um, the door is actually in a rock that disappears they lose access to uh, London, at least uh, for the time being and it goes in a really peculiar way because frankly the ideas in it are unusual but I actually did really enjoy it. The characters are well developed and they're also quite interesting and quite varied. I mean there is a um, the main woman in it, uh, Mary, she has some interesting um, psychology behind her let's say. Then there is a uh, Seek in it as well, which is unusual because frankly there's very few books I've encountered, especially fantasy books, that actually have um, characters whose religion is more significant and one um, who is Eastern European. So it's an interesting selection of characters. It sort of doesn't work in some ways. Indeed, it's not supposed to because it's meant to be this random selection of people thrown together and then they have to try to essentially not be eaten by this world and the various things in it and hunted down or by the people in it and it's unusual I don't want to talk about the plot the world itself by the way be behind the door that they're in is called Down which I'm pretty sure is going to um, have some significance in the second book and ongoing books and I'm quite eager to get to the second actually because this was a curious start the second book was Waking Hell by Al Robertson I read the first book of this, which is called Crashing Heaven, which is the, an ongoing series. This is obviously the newest one, which has only just been released a few weeks ago. I got the first one signed by uh, Al Reynolds in London during the Glance Fest, which I did a video about, which I'll link in the description below. And I met uh, Al Reynolds, and he's a really nice guy. I loved the first book, and I really liked this one. It... It's a completely different plot line and indeed a completely different um, character set almost from the first book. There's a few of the sort of background characters are still the same but the main, the main characters are different in this than the first book which is almost a shame in some ways because the, the, the sort of primary pair in the first book was fantastic. I mean it was just a brilliant pairing but this is almost as good. I mean it doesn't have the humour in in the obvious way that the first book did but that's to be expected when you start off that strong frankly 
I really did enjoy this book and frankly I'm already looking forward to the third book in this world. I would imagine at some point the characters from both the first book and this book and possibly the third and however many they do will end up in one book and it will be like a greater plot line to do with the station. Indeed that's what the series is called, Station. It's set on a space station, science fiction, um, above Earth, well a long way out from Earth and Earth is contaminated and ruined and people now live on random little sort of colonies on space stations and moons and things around the solar system and the plot line is, I'm not going to go into it because frankly it's the second book in the series so I'll, I might spoil things from the first, I'm not entirely sure but I really did enjoy it and if you've read the first book and I would recommend the first book Crashing Heaven then you'll definitely want to read this because frankly it was really really good so now on to the third thing I read, well, and the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th and 12th is the entire Artemis Fowl series by Owen Colfer. I reread these for uh, Ether's Rereadathon and I'm really glad I did because I absolutely love these books to pieces beyond measure. These basically are my Harry Potter. I'm not a fan of Harry Potter particularly but I am with these, I love these books so badly the books in the series are made up of and I've already showed these in a video previously, only a week ago um, Artemis Fowl Artemis Fowl and the Arctic Incident Artemis Fowl and the Eternity Code Artemis Fowl and the Open Deception Artemis Fowl and the Last Colony Artemis Fowl and the Time Paradox Get in there Artemis Fowl and the Atlantis Complex uh, Artemis Fowl and the Last Guardian which is the uh, last book sadly the eighth book there's also a very small book that I read this is in between the first and second written for World Book Day and this is Artemis Fowl and the Seventh Dwarf which is absolutely tiny it's like 40, no, 57 pages or something. I love all these books, I really do. They are um, science fiction and fantasy in one. Artemis Fowl is a um, criminal mastermind, sort of a prodigy. He's uh, 11 years old, almost 12 in the first book. And his plan in the first book is basically to uh, kidnap a fairy and ransom the fairy back to the um, rest of the fairy people who live underground for a pile of gold basically sounds simple doesn't exactly turn out that way it kind of turns out reasonably well but somewhat disastrously as well and indeed the further books which obviously feature the files you know he doesn't die at least not um, in the earlier books anyway he may or may not of course same say power and I love these books beyond measure as I've already said I mean I really can't say uh, enough praise on them they are set both partially underground in where the um, fairies live and the elves live and also in Dublin Ireland as well as these other locations and the books are just so well written they've got a lot of humour in them they've got action in them they've got fantastic characters who are extremely well developed I mean I love the characters in this book. I can't now compare it to Harry Potter because Harry Potter has seven books, these are eight. They were released, well Harry Potter was slightly earlier, by about a year or two, but not by much. I love these books so I'm not a big fan of Harry Potter as I said. But these are just brilliant because the characters are just fantastically well developed. The fact that the books are, most of them ha have a small section, most of them in Dublin Island, it's kind of nice because I know Dublin. Dublin somewhat anyway because I have relatives over there and indeed I've been over there on holidays in the past many times so mentioning Dublin locations is kind of a nice little um, point to me and it just makes me have a more of a connection to this even though it's fantasy than most books because I actually know the places that it mentions which is nice basically I would recommend this for anybody who wants a fun fantasy series with uh, science fiction elements to it with great characters, great world and frankly a book that I class as one of my favourite all time series 
ever. Actually, I think this might be my favourite all-time series ever. Not including Teeth Patchy, because Teeth Patchy is a step above everybody else. But this is, I mean, he, he nearly equals Teeth Patchy's humour in these books. I nearly laugh as much as Teeth Patchy's books, which frankly is an achievement by itself. So, yeah, I would suggest you would read at least the first book and see what you think of it. And then, if you do, read the other books. So, with that said, that's it for the books I've read. If you've read any of these, or I've got you interested enough to want to read any of them, then please leave a comment and we can have a talk, or indeed, everybody can have a talk in, with each other in the comment section below. All my social media links can be found in the description box below, as well as the various people that I mentioned earlier in the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.